The Wild West wasn't just for men. Here are the top five ladies of the Wild West. During the Wild West period, the women usually stood in the shadows of man. But the women on this list challenged the traditional roles, shocked society, and proved that they were as good as, or better, than any man. Laura Bullion Laura Bullion was born in Texas to a family of outlaws and criminals. Her own father was actually a bank robber. When Laura was 15 years old, she left home and started working as a prostitute using the name Della Rose. The brothel that Laura worked at was a popular stopping point for outlaws, such as Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid, along with some other members of the outlaw gang, the Wild Bunch. One gang member was married to Laura's aunt, and Laura was still 15, but that didn't stop Laura from having a romance with him. Laura started a relationship with yet another member of the Wild Bunch gang, and Laura ended up following him to join the Wild Bunch. Laura helped the Wild Bunch gang by moving goods and money for them and was good at making observations that helped the rest of the gang steal horses and rob trains. Laura was often called the Thorny Rose of the Wild Bunch as she was the only female member of the infamous Outlaw Gang. It is unknown how many train robberies she participated in alongside the other members of the gang. Laura had a masculine face and on top of that, she oftentimes disguised herself as a man, which made it hard for authorities to say that she was involved in any of the robberies. That is, until the Great Northern Railway robbery happened. During this robbery, three members of the Wild Bunch gang pretended to be passengers on the train. Just before midnight, several miles from the next town, one of the gang members pulled out his gun and ordered the engineer to stop the train and disconnect the baggage cars from the passenger cars. However, this caught the attention of a local rancher who ran off to alert law enforcement. One of the gang members fired some shots at the rancher, which alerted the passengers. The three robbers opened the safe using dynamite and were joined by a fourth bandit who was waiting nearby. Laura was caught by the Pinkerton detectives with the train robbery money and was sentenced to five years in prison. After she was released, she may have been involved in another attempted train robbery, but this one ended up failing. Laura laid low and lived a quiet life for the rest of her days, living in Tennessee as a seamstress and a dressmaker. Laura was the last surviving member of the Wild Bunch gang and passed away at age 90 from falling off of a horse. Calamity Jane Calamity Jane was one of the most well-known frontiers women of her day. She was born in Missouri and would later grow up to look and act like the roughest man and cuss, drink, and shoot like a cowboy. As a young girl, Jane loved being outside and riding horses and she spent most of her time hunting with the men. She was considered a good shot and a better and more reckless rider than most men. Jane lost both of her parents when she was a teenager and took on the role of providing for her younger siblings. Jane moved her siblings to Wyoming, and to provide for her family, she worked an assortment of odd jobs and may have also worked as a prostitute. Though Jane had a habit of getting drunk and wild and then getting fired from jobs. Jane started working as a scout for the military and was involved in a lot of battles against the Native Americans. This started Jane's habit of dressing like a man, as Jane cared little for cultural and societal norms. Jane earned the nickname Calamity Jane when the soldiers were sent to take care of an Indian uprising. The soldiers were ambushed by a large group of Indians and the captain was shot and fell off of his horse. Jane saw the captain fall and galloped to him and lifted him on her horse where she was able to get him safely back to camp. Upon recovering, the captain said, I name you Calamity Jane, the heroine of the plains. Upon heading to another fort in the military, Jane met Wild Bill Hickok, a famous American gunfighter. Jane and Wild Bill Hickok hit it off immediately as they were both very heavy drinkers and both liked to exaggerate their tales. There are some rumors that these two were romantically involved, but there is no real evidence. Jane had also worked as a Pony Express rider over a 50 mile stretch that was known to be one of the toughest trails. Jane had even toured with Buffalo Bill's Wild West show where she had performed sharpshooting while riding her horse before getting fired for drinking and cussing too much. 
Jane's life is full of rowdy tales as she was far from a polite and mild-mannered woman. Many of the exciting adventures in Jane's life came from Jane herself, and many of them had no actual evidence to back them up. But supposedly, one time she got angry in the middle of a play and stood up and spit a stream of tobacco juice onto the lead actress. Another time, Jane said she met a stagecoach running away from a bunch of Native Americans in pursuit. The driver of the stagecoach had been shot with an arrow, and Jane took over driving the coach and took the injured driver and the six passengers to safety. Jane passed away at the age of 51, most likely due to her alcoholism. She was buried beside Wild Bill Hickok. She once said, I figure if a girl wants to be a legend, she should just go ahead and be one. Pearl Hart Pearl Hart was one of the only female stagecoach robbers in the Wild West. Pearl was born in Ontario, Canada, and unfortunately didn't have a good father. Pearl's father drank a lot and may have even abused Pearl, and at least once kicked Pearl and her siblings out of the house and forced them to beg on the streets for food. Pearl may have even started prostitution at the young age of 13. At the age of 17, Pearl fell for and eloped with a rough cut man who may have been a little bit too much like her father. Pearl's husband drank a lot, often lost all of his money gambling, and was often abusive to Pearl. Pearl found the courage to leave her abusive husband, at least for a while, and traveled to Colorado where she became a popular saloon singer. However, she was pregnant with her husband's child, so had the child and left the child with her family in Canada before traveling to Arizona. Pearl and her husband ended up reuniting and things looked promising for a little bit. Though at this time, the couple started to live a little wildly by going to a lot of saloons and gambling. And during this time, Pearl drank and learned how to smoke and may have started experimenting with some harsher drugs like marijuana and morphine. Unfortunately, Pearl and her husband started having relationship issues again and her husband soon got tired of the domestic life. After one particularly bad argument, Pearl's husband knocked Pearl unconscious and left her to join Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. Pearl was pregnant with her second child at the time and yet again gave birth, gave her child to her family, and headed back to the West. Throughout her life, Pearl became involved with many men. Some were just as abusive as her father and her husband. One day, Pearl received a letter saying that her mother was ill and needed money for medical bills. To make some quick cash, Pearl started working with a man named Joe Boot. Pearl and Joe started scamming unsuspecting men by having Pearl lure them to a room where the men assumed they would be getting some romance. Joe would be hiding and would knock out the men and take their money and their valuables. However, Pearl didn't get as much money as she had hoped by doing this, so the two started planning a stagecoach robbery. In preparation for the robbery, Pearl cut her hair and dressed in man's clothing. When the stagecoach was in a remote location, Pearl and Joe jumped in front of the stagecoach with their guns drawn and ordered the driver to stop. Joe kept his gun pointed at the driver while Pearl ordered the passengers out of the coach and took their money and valuables. After sending the stagecoach on its way, Pearl and Joe rode away but got lost in the hills and left an obvious trail to follow. The sheriff soon caught them and took them to jail. At Pearl's trial, she insisted that the court had no right to put her on trial, saying, I shall not be consent to be tried under a law in which my sex had no voice in making. Regardless, she ended up getting five years in prison. Pearl became a celebrity when she was in prison and oftentimes did interviews with journalists and posed for pictures as the Lady Bandit. Pearl had no issues having sexual interactions outside of marriage, and Pearl ended up pregnant after only a year in prison. Pearl was released from prison soon after this because the prison didn't want to try to explain to the press how an imprisoned woman could become pregnant. After Pearl was released from prison, she mostly disappeared from the records. It is unknown what really happened at the end of Pearl's life. She may have operated a cigar store, perhaps moved to California, or may have married a rancher. Whatever happened in her end, Pearl was one of the last people to hold up a stagecoach and the only female stagecoach robber in Arizona. Belle Starr. 
Belle Star was one of the most notorious female outlaws in the Wild West. In her early years, Belle Star had lived as a spoiled rich girl in Missouri. Belle also loved the outdoors and learned how to ride a horse and handle a gun from her brother. However, her rich girl life changed when the Civil War broke out. This ruined her father's business, and so Belle and her family moved to a small settlement in Texas. Belle soon started associating with men of questionable character and got married to an outlaw. Belle soon became her new husband's partner in crime and helped him steal horses, cattle, and money. Her husband's criminal lifestyle soon caught up to him, and he was shot by a member of his own gang. Belle married yet another outlaw, and the two started having a fresh wave of crimes, including stealing horses and cattle, and illegally selling alcohol to Native Americans. Belle formed an outlaw gang around herself and became the brains behind the illegal operations. If any gang member got captured, Belle would bribe the lawman with a large sum of money, or if that didn't work, her womanly charms. This ensured that her fellow gang members almost always were freed. Belle was able to evade capture for almost a decade until the famous judge Isaac Parker, also known as the Hanging Judge, put Belle behind bars when Belle was caught stealing horses. Upon release, Belle quickly returned to the same illegal activities as before and became known as the Bandit Queen. Belle's second husband then passed from getting into a gunfight, and Belle soon met husband number three. However, this marriage would mark the end for Belle. The couple fought a lot, and her husband was unfaithful. After one particularly bad fight, her husband supposedly offered another man $200 to take out his wife. When the man refused, Belle's husband screamed, Hell, I'll kill the old hag myself and spend the money for whiskey. A few days later, at the age of 41, Belle was fatally shot multiple times from behind. No one was ever convicted of this crime, and Belle's death remains a mystery, even to this day. Though I think it's safe to make some assumptions about her last husband. Annie Oakley Annie Oakley was one of the best sharpshooters of her day. Annie was born in Ohio, and as a young girl, Annie went with her father when he hunted and trapped in the woods. She was eight years old when she made her first shot, hitting a squirrel sitting on a fence right in the head. The young Annie continued to shoot game, which allowed her family to put food on the table and gave some extra money as the extra meat was sold to a local grocery store. Annie could shoot quail and pheasants in the head, which kept the edible portions of the animals free of buckshot. By the age of 15, Annie was known to be a great sharpshooter, and a shooting contest was arranged between Annie and a traveling professional sharpshooter named Frank Butler. When Frank first saw his 5-foot-tall 15-year-old opponent, he reportedly laughed. But Annie ended up winning the shooting match and ended up winning Frank's heart as the two ended up getting married about a year later. Annie and Frank started touring together, performing feats of marksmanship on stage. Annie kept her costumes modest with a calf length skirt, long sleeves, and leggings, which ended up becoming her trademark look. The Lakota Sioux leader, Chief Sitting Bull, ended up seeing one of Annie's performances and was so impressed by her marksmanship, he insisted on adopting Annie and named her Little Sure Shot. This nickname would stick with Annie as she continued to rise in the show business ranks and become the first female superstar in a profession that was dominated by men. Annie then joined Buffalo Bill's Wild West show as a sharpshooter and continued to amaze audiences with her abilities. With a shotgun, Annie could snuff out candles and shoot corks off of bottles from 90 feet away, shoot cigars out of the mouths of willing participants, and even hit targets behind her using only a mirror to aim. Annie could also shoot a playing card with the thin edge held facing towards her multiple times. Annie even performed in front of Queen Victoria. Annie worked hard to be considered a lady, so was mortified when a newspaper printed a false article claiming that Annie had been arrested for stealing to pay for her cocaine addiction. This false story ended up getting reprinted all over the country. Most of the newspapers printed retractions, but Annie spent six years filing suits against 55 newspapers. During her lifetime, Annie taught more than 15,000 women how to shoot and was vocal about women getting equal pay for equal work. Her desire to teach ladies to 
handle guns as naturally as they know how to handle babies was very ahead of the time. During both the Spanish-American War and World War I, Annie offered to raise a company of female sharpshooters, though these offers were not accepted by the president. Annie continued to set marksmanship records and wow audiences up into her 60s and passed away when she was 66 years old.